Welcome to the next installation of Cindy Plays With. Today, we're going to be sweeping the clouds away with the Sesame Street Dictionary. Now, my favorite Sesame Street Muppet is Grover. The very same Grover that is the near and far Grover. Um, also the world famous superhero, Super Grover. And also the not to be forgotten, but very classic Grover the Waiter. So you're probably asking, what's this up with Grover and whatnot? Well, Grover is one of the key integral members of Sesame Street, and he's featured very predominantly in the Sesame Street Dictionary. So I wanted to start off by showing you a couple of instances where Grover is featured. Um, so he is Super Grover as Grover the Waiter, as regular old lovable furry Grover, um, but also in a couple of incarnations that were seen on the show, uh, Marshall Grover, and one that wasn't featured in the show, Grover Nover, the um, motorcycle daredevil. Um, but also, there are so many other Sesame Street characters that are featured predominantly. Some classics that are on the show, as well as in print, print form, but also uh, characters that were very seldomly seen on the show or never on the show. They were just in various print formats, whether they were in individual storybooks or in the dictionary itself. Um, growing up, I love Sesame Street. I mean, I basically was raised on the street. And the dictionary is something that I would read cover to cover, basically. Um, my incarnation that I'm familiar with is uh, something called Big Bird's Sesame Street Dictionary, which came out very early in the 80s um, as a reprint to the Sesame Street Dictionary. And there are eight volumes. And this dictionary is probably one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, why I got into English in school and why I went on to become an English major. Um, it made me love words, it made me appreciate words, um, and it all, and because of that love of words, it basically helped me to become a wordsmith. So poetry, stories, vlogging, etc. just really got me jumped into the world of words and what words could do for the world, for a person. So let's take a wander through the pages of the Sesame Street Dictionary, also known as Big Bird's Sesame Street Dictionary. Published in 1980, uh, the Sesame Street Dictionary was written by Linda Hayward um, with art by Joe Mathau. It was originally one book, but a year later, in 1981, it was reprinted in eight volumes under the title Big Bird's Sesame Street Dictionary uh, by Funk and Wagnalls. Um, back then, the only way that I knew of that the eight volumes could be gotten was in grocery stores. Back in the 80s, um, Topps Market in my hometown would have a display and each week they would have a different book offered. And when they did the, uh, the dictionary, Big Bird's Sesame Street Dictionary, each week would have a different book. So as kids come through the store, they um, would be right there. And I begged my parents, I'm like, please, 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 please. So they bought me volume one and I fell in love with it. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. <laughs> but each time we went grocery shopping and there was a new a new book available, I'm like, please, 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 let me have it, let me have it. You know what kids normally do to get what they want. <laughs> so I got four out of the eight in this manner, going to Tops Market and for grocery shopping. And when there was a new book available, my parents would buy it for me. 
Well, but, well, after volume four, for one reason or another, I don't know if we, I just missed out or we went someplace else, but I never got volumes five through eight. And I guess I was kind of heartbroken early on, but later on, other things came around and I just enjoyed what I had. I mean, I would read these cover to cover um, because the art was just really cool. I mean, it had all my favorite Sesame Street characters all rolled into one book. Um, so I read it in a way like a dictionary, but like a storybook because I would read it cover to cover because each each entry was like its own little story. Um, but it was just so fun. I mean, like I said earlier, um, the dictionary features about 1300 words. Um, and each word, there's a pictorial adaptation of that word. So you have a definition, you have a picture that explains what each of the words are with a Sesame Street Muppet or two or three. Um, and then a sentence that uses that word in relation to the picture. So it was very good about explaining words to younger children. But the big reason for it is that there was a myriad of characters that were featured. You would have Big Bird and Bird and Ernie, Grover, Oscar, you name it. But it also featured rarer Muppets. Um, Muppets that, to my knowledge, never appeared in Sesame Street. Possibly they were featured in the 70s or you know, 1969 or, or, or the 70s, kind of before I started really watching Sesame Street. You have Frazzle, uh, the Busby twins, Fanta Tita, who is the Count Von Count's kitty cat. Um, but there are also um, other characters. Uh, one, of the few, one of the lucky humans that got to be cartoonized uh, by Joe Mathau was Mr. Hooper. He was featured, as far as I can tell, about three times. Uh, and, I, and I actually went through and I counted each time. Uh, there were three specific ones that I found. Three. Um, or he was featured. He's the only live action character that was ever put in the dictionary. Um, and an interesting little factoid is Kermit and Robin are only featured once in the entire eight volume set or one volume if you have the original printing. Two interesting points. One, uh, there are two instances where Grover has a whole page spread um, that are Super Grover episodes. And there are many words featured in, in each of these pages, but it's a little story. You've got four panels that um, tell a little bit, a little story about Super Grover, but there are all these words and examples that are used in these little stories, which I thought was really cool because being a Grover fan, I always loved anything to do with Grover. Um, the other thing is, even at an early age, I really, really, truly enjoyed the art, the cartoon artwork. There are some entries that, if you take away the wording and the definition and you just take the picture, it's almost like it's a mini piece of art in and of itself, or it's even just a little scene. Um, there's a lot of instances where Snuffy is featured where he's in a scene. You see him, you see trees, ground, sky, and he is doing something or involved in something. So it's like its own little entity. In a lot of cases, you just get a word, um, like, I can't think off the top of my head, but I will show you an example, a specific word, and you get a Sesame Street character, Grover, or maybe Ernie, and it's just Ernie standing by himself with whatever he's, whatever the word is trying to explain, or Grover. It's really cool when you actually get a little scene. Um, in some cases, you've got the Sesame Street players putting on a play, so you see them on stage. There's a little audience in, in front, and the little scene is going on, explaining 
whatever word they're explaining. Um, so the artwork really did play a key element in why I enjoyed these books because I couldn't help but want to read the book again, Re read volume one or read volume four over and over again. Um, something else too, I love Muppet horses, whether they're Muppet show horses or Sesame Street horses. And that goes any incarnation of a drawn horse. Back when, as a little girl, I loved horses. What little girl doesn't? Well, most little girls like horses. I was just like, I want that horse, and I want that horse, and I want that horse. So, um, again, it all goes back to the artwork. Characters that you love, you know, Marshall Grover on his trusty horse Fred, uh, whether it's that or Prairie Dawn riding a horse in a desert. Big Birds, Sesame Street Dictionary with the bird himself. And this is volume one, so you have A and B. And the cover would have whatever letters it goes through and some Muppets depicting things with that involve those letters. And in the end pages, well, the front and the back, you had the entire alphabet with various Muppets doing all kinds of things with basically cavorting with the letters and whatnot. So there we go. You can see each with all the different entries and the stuff that they covered and how cool this book really was. Alrighty, well that's my little trip down memory lane. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Cindy Plays With, um, featuring Big Bird Sesame Street Dictionary. Um, I hope you really enjoyed walking down memory lane with me. Um, leave a comment in the comment bo box below about what your favorite Sesame Street Muppet is. Um, give me an idea of other toys or books that you perhaps would like me to do in the future. Uh, I am going to be doing my next installment of this vlog with another Sesame Street anthology. Um, this one David has, and it is called the Sesame Street Library. There we go. Volume one with Big Bird. And David has this entire collection, so he will be helping me out with that one. Um, also, I have various Sesame Street Muppets behind me, uh, as well as other Muppets. Feel free to guess and see if you can find them all. I also have some other ones thrown in there, so feel free to comment on those too because I kind of strategically place them there for your guys' amusement as my own. So I shall see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.